let us continue with our lecture on Fraunhofer diffraction due to single slit in the last lecture we have seen that we divided the slit into n parts and then we tried to find the resultant intensity due to n those n waves and then we saw the resultant intensity distribution we got by the superposition of those waves and we got the pattern and we got the formula for intensity distribution as i is equal to a square sin square alpha by alpha square this expression we got in the last lecture where alpha if i write in terms of path difference i will get pi by lambda e sin theta now we have to understand the intensity distribution that where do we get the maximas and where do we get the minimas let us start with maxima for maxima i should get the maximum intensity for what values so my question is for what values of alpha i get the maximum intensity from the expression of intensity i see that i take the first case as alpha tends to 0 from the expression of intensity i see that for alpha tends to 0 if i take the limit alpha tends to 0 i get the 0 by 0 form and then you all must be aware of the l hospital rule then you can use this and see that this limit when alpha tends to 0 sin alpha by alpha gives me 1 in such a case when this sin alpha by alpha appears to be 1 i get my intensity as maximum intensity this is a square so my maxima i get only one point at alpha tends to zero for the maximum intensity these are refers as primary maxima why i am giving primary maxima the name primary maxima we'll see we'll try to understand that now at alpha tends to zero i get the maximum intensity whether i get this intensity for other points of alpha or not we have to check that now where do i get minimum intensity in order to get the minimum intensity minimas the intensity should be zero intensity cannot be negative so it is maximum at a square and minimum at zero now where do i get again my expression for i is equal to a square sine square alpha by alpha square in order to get intensity as 0 if i take alpha 0 i will get 0 by 0 form and i will get the prime maxima which we have seen earlier now in order to get zero intensity if my numerator is 0 then i will get as intensity 0 because 0 upon some finite quantity will give me 0 now when do i get my numerator 0 if i take sin alpha is equal to 0 alpha is equal to m pi where m is equal to 1, 2, 3, so on. I cannot take m is equal to 0. Because if I take m is equal to 0, again I will get 0 by 0 form. So for alpha is equal to m pi, I will get as 0 intensity. Or I can write in terms of the path difference. That is E sin theta, because my alpha is pi by lambda E sin theta. This is equal to m pi. Or E sin theta is equal to m lambda this is my condition for minima in front of our diffraction due to single slit now at m pi values for alpha i get minimas and so till now i understand that if i would like to plot i versus alpha then when alpha is zero i get maxima this is my maximum intensity as a square and for alpha is equal to pi 2 pi 3 pi i will get minimas so like this i will get this much information i have i don't know anything about what happens between pi and 2 pi how whether this obviously between two minimas i should have maxima but this maxima whether where do i get and whether this maxima 
as of equal height as primary maxima i don't know so in order to check this i need to find more points for the maximas now directly from the equation i am not able to see i am just getting the primary maxima one maxima at alpha is equal to 0 and alpha is equal to m pi i am get getting minimas so other maximas how do i get i can get by finding the general derivative equation which i used to find maximas and minimas and this i call this as secondary maximas i don't know yet whether the secondary maxima is of equal height as primary maxima or not but it is obvious that because we did not get these points directly from the equation so there has to be some more information now in addition to these principal maximas there are other maximas how do i find that i can find this from the intensity equation a square sin square alpha by alpha square you know to find the maximum minima i can take derivative di by d alpha is equal to zero this is my general equation if i put the derivative zero i can get the maximum minimas you might have seen this earlier in inter if i differentiate this equation a square sin square alpha by alpha square i will get like this this is general equation this will also contain the previous condition for maximum minima which i have already obtained so you can see that sin so this the product of these two quantities is equal to zero so either this first quantity is zero or second quantity is zero the first quantity i have already got the primary maxima now from the second equation i get 10 alpha is equal to alpha now for these points of alpha i will get other maximas what are these alpha basically this equation is a combination of two equations i can write this as y is equal to alpha and y is equal to 10 alpha if I plot these two equations, y is equal to alpha, which is a straight line, and 10 alpha curve, then the intersection of these two curves will give me, will give me alpha for which I will get other maximas. This you can plot in any software. So I have used Mathematica. I'll just show you quickly that if I plot here like this, this I've plotted in Mathematica. So the first curve is y is equal to alpha or I have taken y is equal to x. Then the second curve is y is equal to 10 alpha, 10x. Then when I take the intersection of these two, so I have plotted 10 alpha minus alpha. Then you see that there is a modification. These points you can find out. This will give you the values of alpha where you will be having other maximas. And these points, if you see, these points are this point is here you will get around 1.5 but it is not exact 1.5 this software will give you if i plot these these points it will be 1.43 pi the second point is 2.46 pi then and so on so i am getting other maximas at the midpoints 3 pi by 2 5 pi by 2 7 pi by 2 but not exactly as 1.5 little less than that now okay so these points alpha as i've shown you i get as alpha is equal to 1.43 pi 2.46 pi and so on for these points alpha i'll get mix maxima secondary maximas and when i uh, substitute this these alphas for i in sine square alpha by alpha square I will get i's as 4 by 9 pi square comma 4 by 25 pi square of primary maximas. The values of i for alpha is equal to 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on. So these are the points where we get secondary maximas 
and the intensity is not equal to primary maxima we'll see that the fourth secondary maxima the second one is 4 by 9 pi square of the primary maxima another one is still lesser than 4 by 25 pi square of primary maxima so now if i plot the graph between i and alpha already we have seen at alpha is equal to 0 i get maxima a square now pi 2 pi 3 pi i got minimas earlier and now from this intersection of these two curves i got secondary maximas at 1.43 pi so this is not exactly at the center so the my peak is little bit shifted towards the left and then 5 pi by 2, 2 .4, the exact point is 2.46 pi these two equations will give me the values of alpha and so this is still and this is less than and so on so further the intensity goes on decreasing this is how my intensity pattern look like for from of a diffraction intensity for from of a diffraction due to single slit so we see that when we take two slits and we do not consider uh, the slit width in Young's double slit experiment we get the intensity pattern where all the maximas are of equal height and equally placed whereas when we take the slit width into account and we consider only one slit then my intensity pattern is all the maximas we get of decreasing intensity and not of equal height let us now now we'll try to see that if instead of one slit if I take two slits of appreciable width then I take into account the slit width also how my pattern looks like we'll try to see in the next lecture thank you